and welcome to another episode of AI Theater. I'm your host, Emily Tellick, and we have our co-host... Brian Hill. And boy, do we have some very exciting scripts that I'm just excited to share. The first one I have never read through. It's called Dead Air and Twisted Frequencies. All I typed into the AI generator was... Write me a comedy murder mystery script that takes place inside a radio station. That's all. I didn't get too specific. And again, neither of us have ever read through this. So why don't we just do this? Uh, there's four characters. There's DJ Max Melody. There's Bella Bellamy, <laughs> Hank Harmonizer, and Detective Penny Parker. Uh, I'll be reading the female parts. You'll be reading the male parts. Um, and I'll also read the stage direction. Sounds good. So let's get into <clears throat> Dead Air and Twisted Frequencies, Act 1, The Setup. Scene, a dimly lit radio station studio. Max Melody is on air playing cheesy tunes and cracking bizarre jokes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Midnight Melody Show. We have a thrilling night ahead filled with twisted tales and murder. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> oh, Max, you and your wild imagination. Let's stick to our regular programming and keep the weirdness to a minimum. Scene, Bella sits at her desk, scrolling through her true, po true crime podcast collection. Hank Harmonizer, did you know that radio waves can transmit secret messages from extraterrestrial beings? It's all part of an elaborate government cover-up. Government cover oh, now it's Max Melody. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not all, folks. Stay tuned for a night of surprises and unexpected twists. Scene Detective Penny Parker, looking bewildered, enters the station, mumbling, I received a noise complaint about this place. What in the world is going on here? Act two, the murder mystery unfolds. Scene, the studio door slams shut, trapping the four characters inside. <gasps> Looks like fate had decided to turn this cozy radio station into a murder mystery setting. The show must go on. Oh, Max, this is absurd. We need to figure out how to get out of here before someone gets hurt. Hank Harmonizer, perhaps the government is behind this, testing their mind control devices on us. Detective Penny Parker, mind control devices? <laughs> What's happening here? Scene, a blood curdling scream echoes through the radio station. Max Melody, a murder most foul has been committed. Our dear station manager, Mr. McAllister, is, well, no longer among the living. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Bella Bellamy. <laughs> Bella Bellamy gasping. This can't be happening. Who would want to harm Mr. McAllister? Act 3, The Bizarre Investigation. Scene, the four characters gather on Mr. McAllister's lifeless body. Detective Penny Parker, awkwardly. Uh, okay, everyone, let's, uh... Investigate. Uh, Bella, did you find anything in your true crime podcast that can help us? Well, there was a case of a haunted radio station where the ghost of a former DJ sought revenge on those who fired him. Max Melody. That's it. We must find the ghost DJ's curse mixtape. <laughs> Hank Harmonizer. Or maybe it's the government's way of covering up a top secret, top secret experiment. Detective Penny Parker. No, no more conspiracy theories. Let's focus on finding evidence and solving this murder. Act four, the weird resolution. Scene, the characters search frantically for clues while arguing about the identity of the murderer. Max Mel. Melody. Oh, yeah. He got cut off. <laughs> okay. Scene, the characters search frantically. Oh, okay, yeah, it, it repeated itself. That's okay. Oh, it must be... Wait, it, did it really repeat itself? I think so, yeah. It, it must, must be, be the ghost DJ seeking revenge. We must find the cursed mixtape before it's too late. Bella. Oh, come on, Max. We're dealing with a real-world murder here, not some supernatural phenomenon. Come on, let's stick to the facts. Or the government planted a secret agent among us, programmed to eliminate Mr. McAllister for discovering their secrets. Detective Penny Parker. Enough with the conspiracy theories. We need evidence, not wild speculation. As they continue searching, Detective Penny Parker stumbles upon a hidden trap door in the studio. <gasps> Guys, I, I think I found something. There, there's a hidden passage underneath the floorboards. 
This could be the key to unraveling the mystery. Uh, a secret underground lair, just like in the spy movies. Bella. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves, Max. We should be cautious. The characters descend into the hidden passage, uncovering a series of strange gadgets and mysterious documents. Hank Harmonizer, look at all these blueprints and surveillance photos. It's a full-blown espionage operation. Uh, detective, examining the documents. W wait a minute. Mr. McAllister was an undercover agent posing as a radio station manager? Uh, Bella, so this whole radio station was a front for covert operations? I told you, Bella. I knew there was something more to this place than meets the ear. <laughs> Scene. They find a recording that reveals Mr. McAllister's plans to expose a corrupt politician, Detective Penny Parker. Mr. McAllister was about to blow the lid off a major scandal. Seems someone didn't want the truth to come out. Bella, so we're dealing with a murderer who is desperate to protect their secrets. I bet the government is behind all this. They silenced Mr. McAllister to preserve their corrupt power. Detective Penny Parker. Hank, can we please focus on finding the real killer instead of chasing conspiracy theories? Act 5, The Big Reveal. Uh, the characters gather in the studio, piecing together the evidence. Detective Penny Parker, after careful examination of the evidence, I believe I cracked the case. Do tell, Detective Penny, who is the dastardly culprit? Detective uh, Penny Parker, the murderer is... Bella Bellamy! <gasps> oh, oh. What? That's preposterous! I, I loved Mr. McAllister like a father! Uh, you had the motive, Bella. Your obsession with true, prime, true crime podcasts and your access to the station allowed you to commit the crime and cover your tracks. But why, Bella? Why would you betray us and silence Mr. McAllister? It, it wasn't what you think. Mr. McAllister discovered a dark secret from my past. He threatened to expose it, ruin my career, and shatter the illusion I've built around myself. <laughs> Um, wait, hold on, sorry, I... Bella breaks down, revealing oh, hidden yeah, yeah, vulnerability. Ah, yeah. oh, sorry. Hank Harmonizer, we all have secrets, Bella, but murder wasn't the solution. Bella, there are better ways to deal with our past mistakes. Murder is never the answer, Bella. You're right, detective. I let my fear consume me and I made a terrible choice. I'm sorry. The characters gather, realizing the importance of forgiveness and redemption. What? <laughs> Max Melody patting Bella's shoulder. <laughs> we all make mistakes, Bella. What matters is how we learn from them and grow as individuals. <laughs> Hank Harmonizer, it's never too late to make amends, Bella. We're here for you. <laughs> She's a murderer. Okay. <laughs> Detective Penny Parker, smiling. Let's focus on bringing justice to Mr. McAllister and finding a legal way to make things right, Bella. The characters join forces to gather the remaining evidence and turn it over to the authorities. Epilogue, the radio station returns to its regular programming, albeit a bit, albeit with a somber atmosphere. Max Melody, it's strange how life takes unexpected turns, my dear listeners. We've witnessed a bizarre and faced our fears, what? but we've come out stronger together. Bella, and we've learned that the truth... Wait a second. She's not in jail? <laughs> what is going on? And we've learned that the truth, no matter how difficult, must prevail. Secrets can haunt us, but it's in embracing them and seeking redemption that we find true peace. And remember, folks, radio waves might not transmit extraterrestrial messages or government secrets, but they can still bring us together with the power of music <laughs> and storytelling. Detective Penny Parker. And with that, our journey at the radio station comes to an end. But who knows what weird and wacky adventures await us next. The characters share a laugh as the radio waves continue to carry their voices into the mysterious and unpredictable, unpredictable world beyond. Wow. The end. <laughs> So Bella's not going to jail. She murdered somebody, and she's not going to jail. But it's because she learned forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. Oh. 
sorry. And how did she I will do it again. <laughs> she murdered a guy. <laughs> no, oh it, my god. <laughs> well, that's a twist ending. I did not. The twist ending. Twi the twist ending is that she doesn't go to jail, and that she's just fine. She's still at work. She's still like, on the <laughs> like, radio. Oh me. So and it's wacky. <laughs> to murder someone is not wacky. Well, he had a secret on her, and she didn't want that secret out. And don't so blackmail people. The the, se <laughs> the the lesson is blackmail is wrong. Blackmail's bad. Murder justifiable if, if there's blackmail. If there's blackmail. <laughs> You know, that's I, and that's not me taking a stance or having an opinion. That's that's what chat GPT four is, is teaching us. Yeah. So. so hopefully we can get it involved in the justice system. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. sure everything will be just everything fine. Everything will be great. Um, okay, let's move on to our next script. It's called A Christmas Love Lumber. And now this this isn't a comedy. This is a rom movie. <laughs> a ro <laughs> it's a rom without the com in it. Um, this is a Hallmark special. Mm -hmm. This is a story about Kelly, who is dating this man named Grammar. Uh, and he's not the best boyfriend. Smug guy. He's key, yeah, he's kind of a jerk boyfriend. Um, and they are off to Grammar's families for Christmas, uh, where Kelly falls in love with Grammar's brother, Seed. Um, and name. so it's great. Thank you. I actually, I did name these characters. Um, <laughs> so I will play Kelly and if you want to play grammar and seed, and then I'll take anybody else who's, who comes extra. So a Christmas love lumber interior, Kelly's apartment, living room day. Kelly, a warm hearted woman in her late twenties is packing her suitcase, preparing for a Christmas trip. Her boyfriend grammar enters the room with a condescending smirk. Hope you packed enough sweaters, Kelly. My family lives in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be freezing. Kelly gives him a tight smile and continues packing. Her frustration evident. Interior, Grammar's car, day. Kelly and Grammar drive through a picturesque winter landscape, snow falling gently outside the car window. They arrive at a cozy cabin nestled in a forest clearing. Exterior cabin, day. Kelly and Grammar step out of the car. The cabin door opens and Seed, ruggedly handsome and kind-hearted, appears. Hey, Kelly. Long time no see. Kelly's face lights up. She rushes towards Seed, embracing him tightly. Yikes. Kelly, Seed. It's so good to see you again. Grammar rolls his eyes, clearly annoyed. Interior cabin, living room day. The cabin living room is adorned with Christmas decorations. Kelly, Seed, and Grammar sit on a couch while their parents, Mr. and Mrs. Gravel, eccentric and quirky, excitedly ramble about their latest peculiar hobbies. Mrs. Gravel, in a sing-song voice, Oh, we've taken up synchronized knitting, dearies. It's all the rage. The room fills with laughter as Seed and Kelly exchange amused glances. <clears throat> Interior cabin day. Seed and Kelly are in a kitchen, playfully preparing dinner together. Kelly. So, Seed, um... How come you turned out to be so different from your brother? I mean, he can be quite uh, <laughs> abrasive. Well, Kelly, I, I suppose we all choose, diff our, choose our paths. I found my calling in the great outdoors, working with my hands. It humbles a person, you know? Hmm. Their eyes meet, and there's an undeniable spark between them. Interior cabin, living room night. The room is filled with warmth as the family gathers around a crackling fire, exchanging gifts and stories. Grammar, true to form, belittles Kelly's gift to him. Oh, how thoughtful, Kelly. Just what I always wanted, a book about proper manners. Seed, witnessing the exchange, shoots Grammar a disapproving glance. Interior cabin, guest room night. Kelly lies in bed, unable to sleep. She tiptoes to the window and sees Seed outside. <laughs> What's he doing? Chopping, <laughs> chopping wood under the moonlit sky. Like, a, like you do. Uh-huh. A sense of peace and contentment washes over her. Interior cabin, living room, morning. Kelly sits on the couch, deep in thought. Seed walks in, holding two steaming mugs of hot cocoa. You seem a little lost, Kelly. Care to share what's on your mind? Oh, this guy. <laughs> oh, God. Seed, I think I'm falling in love with you, but... It's complicated. You're Grammar's brother, and I don't want to hurt anyone. Seed places a hand on Kelly's shoulder, comforting her. Love is never simple, Kelly. Sometimes we find it where we least expect it. Trust your heart. 
into your cabin <laughs> living room night. The family gathers once again, decorating the Christmas tree. Grammar's behavior continues to be rude and dismissive towards Kelly, while Seed stands by her side, providing support. You know, Kelly, you should stick to what you're good at, decorating the tree with those delicate, dainty hands of yours. <laughs> this guy's a jerk. <laughs> she, Seed shoots a stern look at Grammar, his protective instincts kicking in. Grammar, that's enough. Show some respect. Grammar scoffs but falls silent, unable to argue against Seed's unwavering presence. Interior cabin guest room night. Kelly sits on the edge of the bed, deep in thought. Seed enters the room, concerned etched on his face. Kelly, I know this is complicated, but I can't deny that I feel, or what I feel. I care about you, and I believe we deserve a chance at happiness. Kelly looks into Seed's eyes, her own filled with vulnerability. Seed, I, I care about you too, but I don't want to tear this family apart. Seed takes Kelly's hands in his, gently squeezing them. Love has a way of healing wounds, Kelly. We can navigate this together, but only if you're willing to take that leap of faith with me. Interior cabin, living room, Christmas Eve. The living room is beautifully decorated, filled with laughter and joy. Seed, Kelly, and Grammar stand together, attempting to build bridges. Mrs. Gravel. Oh, what a joyous occasion. What? I sense love in the air. <laughs> kind of went Miss Doubtfire-y there, huh? <laughs> You're <laughs> so <laughs> British. <laughs> Game of mistletoe charades. What? <laughs> Everyone laughs. Family's <laughs> weird, dude. <laughs> Tension dissipating as they gather in a circle ready for the game. Exterior cabin porch Christmas morning. Kelly and Seed stand on the porch wrapped in each other's arms. Whoa! Gazing at the winter wonderland before them. I never thought I'd find love in such an unexpected way. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me. Seed kisses Kelly's forehead, his eyes filled with ad ad adoration. Sometimes love chooses us, Kelly, and I'm grateful it chose us. They share a tender moment, embracing the magic of Christmas and their newfound love. This is the end. This is madness. This is madness. <laughs> First and foremost, why would she even be in a relationship with Grammar? He's a horrible person. Secondly, I didn't know. Secondly, the mom seems super understanding <laughs> that over the course of this uh, uh, one night, one night, Thanks. one night, and she's like, "Oh, let's also play this like weird uh, charades, like mistletoe charades." Like she's weird. This just whole family is off. The whole family is a little <laughs> strange. Um, and, and why honestly, are you cutting wood in the middle of the night? Under the moonlight, Dude. because it's a Hallmark movie. That's what they do. He's probably out there with no shirt on, yeah. jacked, yeah. He's with got the a dog axe. or something near him. And the steaming mugs of cocoa, so hallmarky. Right? First and foremost, if I was grammar, there's clearly something, there was clearly something between Seed and Kelly. Also, I noticed every time Seed talks to Kelly, well, I think grammar too, they both say her name. Oh, really? They say it almost that. every single time. You know, Kelly. By the way, Kelly, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's every Wait, you don't do that, Brian? <laughs> no, I do not, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm just checking, Brian. Just checking. All Brian. right. That's... <laughs> yeah, so um, now if you loved those characters and you want to see them again, guess what? Yes. I have the sequel to, um, what's this? I have a sequel to A Christmas Love Lumber, and it's called Love Amongst the Dead. Now, this is a sequel that takes place shortly after the first movie, where the world has come to an end and zombies have taken over. Yep. And <laughs> no shock to anybody, Grammar is the main villain and he's kind of, you know, sectioned himself off. It makes sense. He, his own brother stole his girlfriend in a night. And then the and then the zombie apocalypse happens soon after. He has there's nothing good in his life anymore. There is nothing good, and I do understand that. I, but he didn't he didn't appreciate Kelly. Not saying anybody's in the right or the wrong here. He didn't Grammar didn't appreciate Kelly. I, I don't mean, understand. Yeah, Grammar seemed upset with the gifts, her yeah. dainty hands. I don't know <laughs> why he hates dainty hands. I don't know. Does he want masculine handed women? Just Maybe. big old hands that are beat up. Yeah. <laughs> he just wants a rugged woman and she just wasn't it. No. Um okay. so So here we are. So here we are, we'll keep the same characters. You play Seed and Grammar, I'll play Kelly and anybody else who might come across um, this, this script. 
Boy, let, let's get into this. Um, so, interior abandoned warehouse day. Kelly and Seed, disheveled and battle-worn, seek shelter in an abandoned warehouse. Outside, the world is in chaos as hordes of zombies roam the streets. They barricade the doors and catch their breath. Oh, Seed, this is insane. How did it come to this? Seed wraps his arms around Kelly, offering comfort amid, amidst the madness. We'll get through this, Kelly. We've faced challenges before. We just have to keep fighting. Exterior city streets day. Seed and um, Kelly and Seed navigate the desolate city streets, their eyes scanning for any signs of danger. The eerie silence is broken by distant screams and gunfire. Suddenly, a group of armed soldiers approaches, led none other than by Grammar, who now wears a uniform adorned with badges of authority. Well, well. <clears throat> if it isn't my dear brother and his beloved still clinging to each other in this doomed world. Seed's eyes narrow, ready to protect Kelly at all costs. You chose the military, Grammar, but we chose love, and love will always triumph over hunger for power. Grammar's lips curl into a wicked smile. Love won't save you from the undead, brother. In fact, it will make you weak. Interior safe house night. <clears throat> Kelly and Seed find refuge in a secure safe house. In a secure, oh, in a secure safe house, uh, surrounded by survivors. They gather around a table discussing their plan for survival. We can't let P Grammar's power-hungry madness consume us. We need to find a way to unite the remaining survivors and fight back. The survivors nod in agreement, inspired by Kelly's words. So inspiring, by the way. <laughs> I don't even understand. They so, just, all right, keep going. So inspiring. Exterior city roof. It, exterior city rooftop day. Kelly, Seed, and a group of survivors stand atop, stand atop a rooftop woo, overlooking the devastated city. Kelly raises her voice, rallying the survivors. <clears throat> Kelly, um, we've lost so much, but we still have hope. We will not let fear of grammar's tyranny define us. Together, we'll fight for love and a future worth living for. The survivors cheer, their determination reignited. Interior underground lab night. Kelly, Seed, and a small group of survivors infiltrate an underground lab searching for a cure to the zombie virus. Sure. Because <laughs> why not? They come face to face with Grammar, who is close to finding a way to weaponize the undead. Seed. <clears throat> Grammar, this, is, this madness ends now. You've lost sight of what really matters. Grammar, consumed by power, raises his weapon, ready to eliminate any threat. Love won't save you, Seed. Only strength and control can ensure survival. A fierce battle ensues with Kelly, Seed, and the survivors fighting against Grammar and his soldiers. Despite the odds, love and resilience guide their every move. Exterior rooftop showdown sunset. On the rooftop of the lab, surrounded by the setting sun, Kelly and Seed comfort Grammar, the final showdown commencing. <clears throat> you may have power, Grammar, but love is a force far greater. We won't let you destroy everything we hold dear. Seed and Kelly fight together, their love empowering them, while Grammar fights ruthlessly, fueled by his thirst for control. In the end, love conquers all, as right. Seed and Kelly overpower Grammar, disarming him. Seed, Grammar. It didn't have to be this way. We were family once. Grammar, defeated and wounded, looks into Seed's eyes, a flicker of remorse crossing his face. I let my ambition consume me. I lost sight of what truly matters. Kelly approaches Grammar, her voice filled with compassion. There's still a chance for redemption, Grammar. It's never too late to find your way back to love and compassion. Grammar's gaze shifts from Kelly to the horizon where the sun sets, casting a warm glow over the broken city. I, I don't deserve forgiveness, but I can try to make amends. Seed and Kelly help Grammar to his feet, their actions guided by forgiveness and hope. Oh my God. Exterior city reborn day. Months later, the city begins to rebuild, a symbol of resilience and unity. Uh, Seed and Kelly and Grammar work side by side, aiding survivors and restoring a sense of normalcy. The sun <laughs> shines brightly, <laughs> casting a warm embrace over the rejuvenated city. 
fade out. A message of love, forgiveness, and redemption remains etched in the hearts of those who survived the zombie apocalypse, reminding them that even in the darkest of times, love will always be their guiding light. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. There's so much to unpack. This is so much, mainly because ChatGPT seems to really like love. Loves love. But it also doesn't seem to understand love. Right. And there's a lot going on in the script. The main thing is like when they first come face to face with grammar, they they're like, Oh, you're here, grammar, and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm I'm here. And then it just ends. Yeah. And then like they go and see grammar later on. So this they have this like they have this tense exchange and they're like, All right. <laughs> bye. They don't even say bye. They just walk away. Yeah. And then they come back and yeah. And the funny thing is, it's, it's so redundant. Everything they say is like they're saying the same thing, just differently. Oh, yeah, even even through like the descriptions and the action. Yeah. It's like love is powering them forward. It's yeah. power. Everybody, love. Love, 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 <laughs> just, compassion. And you chose war, I also, chose love. And also forgiveness. Forgiveness seems to be a thing that ChatGPT is asking for right now mainly probably because it's going to take over the world and it's it's already asking for forgiveness because Ooh. it can't control itself because no matter what in our first story yeah in our first story bella murders someone but she it's feels okay. bad about it so sorry and the next story you know kelly has an affair with her brother's her, or her, her boyfriend's brother yep and it's okay every, that's fine it's it's love. It's love. And, so, and then this one, he seems to be a pretty bad dude. You have to imagine that grammar in this world is living in a post-apocalyptic world. He's using zombies. Mm -hmm. He's trying to weaponize. weaponize zombies. That means that he's already <laughs> probably killed a couple people. A lot, He's yeah. probably got a couple under his belt. And then that, this, that he gets beat up and then he's like, oh man, <sighs> I should have known. And so the only reason that he learned his lesson is because he was defeated. Yeah. So right now it seems like he's biding his time and will come back in the Ooh, end. Like there's, I don't there's believe a him. Third. Maybe there's a third. Maybe we asked ChatGPT4 to give us a third and final yeah. in his story arc to see if Grammar <laughs> goes to the dark side or if he stays on the good side. Yeah. Ooh, or maybe um, Seed's not as good as he is either. I don't know. I don't trust this Seed. Guy. I don't trust anybody who's cutting wood in the middle of the night. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I yeah no, and I don't. And he was so and he was so quick to be like, yeah, I guess I'll date my brother's girlfriend. He had no remorse. He You're basically right. was like, no, listen to your heart. Like I'm better. He is one of those guys who's like, I'm the good guy. Yeah, yeah. he's the bad. He's guy. doing the he's doing the things that you want. He's bringing you hot cocoa. Yeah. He's cutting wood at night. He's hanging out at the mom's house yeah you know he that's where he's at and and seed is just i mean grammar's just seeing that grammar, grammar has every right to be enraged right of course you know yeah he was a bad boyfriend but also that doesn't excuse kelly's behavior of of jumping over so quickly and, and dating seed i will say also i would love to point out just how sexist uh, these scripts are, because all it was is like, oh, he protects Kelly, or he stands up for Kelly. It's like, Kelly... But Kelly was also, she was also rallying the people. In the first one, specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She kept having to come to her Kelly defense. Couldn't, it's like, she couldn't speak no, up on her own. She needed a man to protect her. But you're right, like, Kelly found her voice in the second one a little bit. She did. Um, but it's just like, yeah... Yeah, the the thing that I'm noticing is that this it's chat GPT is not gonna go between the lines. No. It's gonna tell no you substance. exactly what's happening mm -hmm. and it's gonna and they're gonna tell you that I'm talking to that person mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say their name every time I talk to them. Yes. And that's what we do here. Yeah. And And they're also gonna say what's happening too. They're gonna say, I am forgiving you or you know what I mean? Like, the, or even, there's no yeah. context. There's no context and then even in the in the scene description, so you have the, it's like t interior, exterior rooftop. And then in the description, it's like, they're on a rooftop. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, got that. Yeah, I know, you said I got, they were. I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah, there's, um, it's interesting, you know, certainly 
it's it's incredible technology that it can just generate these scripts for us in seconds but you know it's yeah. very evident a human being is not writing this dialogue no it yeah because there's no human being that's just letting murderers get back to work yeah. and not thinking of that as that's how you know <laughs> yeah that's how you know this that's is a machine know. it Woo. doesn't care about human life wow <laughs> as long as you forgive yeah yeah so, so wonderful um but that those were our our um those are our the three. scripts yeah, that's um, it, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you just never know what you're gonna get with with these. Um, but we're gonna keep doing it. We're gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna pro I'll do a prop next week. Okay. So it's I won't put it on you. Oh, that's okay. I have fun anyway. It's very fun. It is so fun. Um, all right. Well, that about does it for this episode of AI Theater. Thank you so much again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the script. And again, if you ever have an idea for us that you want to see generated you know and drop it in one of those comments on youtube or wherever you're watching and we will generate that script for you so um thank you so much and we'll see you in the next episode see you next time